Having users enter dates is as simple as binding an at state property that holds a date to a date picker. But things get a great deal woollier after that. You see, dates are hard, like really hard, way harder than you think, way harder than I think, and I've been using dates for years. Dates are just flat out hard. And let's look at a trivial example to see why. Let's do func trivial example <laughs> here. Let's say let now is date.now and let tomorrow be date.now dot adding time interval 86400. And our range will be now through to uh, tomorrow, like that. So we've got a range here that contains the time now up to the same time tomorrow. Uh, that's the number of seconds in one day. And it becomes a range. So any time between now and the same time tomorrow, inclusive either side. And that might seem easy enough, but do all days have 86,400 seconds? I mean, if they did, a lot of people will be out of jobs because you've got to think about daylight savings time. Sometimes clocks go forward, losing an hour. Sometimes they go back, gaining an hour. There might be 23 or 25 hours in the day, depending on the time of the year. Plus there are leap seconds, you know, times that get added to clocks to adjust for the Earth's slowing rotation. If you think that's hard, I'd like to go to your Mac terminal and run this command, cal, C-A-L. Uh, this prints the current calendar. You can see it's October 22nd, 2021 right now. And that's cool, but you can also ask it to print out particular calendars throughout the year. We could say, show me the calendar for September, the ninth month, 1752. Particular year, particular month, for a reason. I'll press enter, and that's the calendar. The first, the second, the 14th, 15th, 16th. Like a whole bunch of days are just missing from that month, just excised from history, because the calendar here moved from Julian to Gregorian to fix inconsistencies in dates. They'd been floating further and further off, so they jumped across and just cut the dates to catch up with where it should have been in the first place. Dates are hard. <laughs> now, the reason I'm saying this all isn't to try and scare you off. Dates are inevitable for programs, after all. Instead, I want you to think about the fact that for anything significant, for any use of dates that actually matters in our code, we need to rely on Apple's frameworks for calculations and formatting. That means things like 86,400, five testing purposes, noodling around, learning, but for real code, you don't wanna do that. Now in this project, we'll be using dates in at least three ways. First, we'll be asking users to choose a sensible wake up time. When do you want to wake up? Second, we'll be reading the hour and minute from that value they wanna wake up. And third, we want to show their suggested bedtime neatly formatted in a human readable way. We could, if we wanted to, do all that by hand, but then you're into the realm of daylight savings, leap seconds, and the Gregorian calendar mess I showed you a minute ago. Much better, much better is to have iOS do all that hard work for us. It's significantly less work, and it's guaranteed to be correct regardless of where in the world that user is. Let's tackle each of these individually because there's quite a lot here to unpick. Starting with choosing a sensible wake up time. As you've seen, Swift gives us a date type for working with dates and times and that encapsulates year, month, day, hour, minute, second, time zone and more. It's a big complex type, it's really powerful. However, we don't want to think about most of that. We want to say, give me an 8 a.m. wake up time, regardless of what day it is today. I don't care it's Monday the 5th, Pfft, doesn't matter. What is the wake up time, hour and minute? Now, Swift has a slightly different type for dealing with this called date components. The components of a date, the hour, the minute, the second, and so forth. We can read just the bits we care about. And we can make these things by saying something like var components equals a date components. And then go ahead and write values. We could say components dot hour is eight. Components dot minute is zero. 
So eight o'clock sharp. Let date equals calendar dot current dot date from those components. And we'll get back a correct date for the current time, well, year, date, everything, with hour and minute set to eight and zero respectively. Now, because of difficulties around date validation, this date from thing will send back an optional date. And so it's a good idea to use nil coalescing to make sure we have a real date here. If that fails for any reason, which it should never do, but you never know, nil coalesce back to date.now. And so with that in place, date will always be a real date, either the current date or 8 a.m. on the current date. The second challenge is how we then read the hour they want to wake up. Now remember, date picker is bound to a general date that contains year, month, day, time zone, hour, minute, second, duh, 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 lots of stuff. We want to pull out just the hour and minute components. And again, date components comes to the rescue. We can ask iOS to provide specific components from a date, then read those back out. Now, one hiccup is there's a disconnect between the values we request and the values we get back thanks to the way date components works. We can ask for the hour and minute, but we'll be handed back this components with optional values for all properties. You know, components, dot, blah, 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 optional int, optional int, optional time zone, optional calendar, optional day. It's all completely optional. So again, we've got to provide sensible defaults. Now, we know they're going to be there. We ask for the hour and minute, but we've still got to be careful working with the optionals when they come back. And so we might write code like this. Let components equals calendar dot current dot date components. And there are a few options here. We want uh, components from here. So we'll ask for components dot hour and dot minute from the date, date dot now, for example. You don't need two like that. And that'll send back the date components of the current time, current date exactly, but just the hour and minute. So now we can say, uh, let hour, hour equals components dot hour, nil coalescing, zero. And let minute equals components dot minute, nil coalescing, zero. And again, both of these should work. We're asking for them explicitly here. They should be set but we can still provide a sensible default if they aren't set for some bizarre reason. And the last challenge is how we challenge even is how we format dates and times. And here we have two options because first we can use the format parameter that works great on text fields directly. We could say up here, um, that a text with date dot now inside with a format of dot date time dot hour dot minute. That works well. So we're saying, show me the current date using the format date time and pull out the hour and minute like that. And it will do. You can see it's 5.58 p.m. right now. And if you wanted the day, month, and year, just say that instead. You'd say date time dot day dot month dot year. That also works. So it's gonna print out Oct 22 comma 2021. Now you might wonder how this adapts to handling different date formats. For example, here in the UK, we do day slash month slash year, but in some other countries they have month slash day slash year. Some others have year slash month slash day. The magic is we don't have to care. You know, we're writing out day, month, year. We're saying we want that data in our format. Not that it must be in the day, month, year format. And so you can see, Oct 22, 2021 does not match day, then month, then year. It's doing month, then day, then year. It's rearranged based on the locale, the region of my simulator. So we're asking for it. We're not saying how it's reformatted exactly, which is really, really powerful stuff. As an alternative, we can also call formatted directly on dates, passing in the configuration we want to use. For example, we could say, date dot now dot formatted and the date format I'll say give me a long format and time 
give me shortened format. And now we'll get back, what's this? October 22, 2021, 5 to 9 p.m. So we're formatting it directly based on a length of the date and length of the time. There are other options here. You could say, you know, I want to omit the time, for example, just give me the date. It's down to you. The point of all this, again, is that dates are hard, but Apple provides us with stacks of helpers to make them less hard and more correct, so we make fewer date handling errors. If you learn to use these handlers, these APIs well, you will write less code and you'll write better code too.